the specter of my imagining How black and ever darkening It knows each pain and sorrow Stirring within my morrow seven plagues on mankind. The God who commanded Abraham to offer up a sacrifice, in human act though it was, his firstborn in whom he delighted. The God who forced upon his own child, flesh of his spirit, the agony of the cross, and to hold back man's urge to attain eternity, could think of only bestowing upon him one birthright, death in exchange for life there and the hereafter, which doesn't exist because there's barely any life in the here and now, and you still consider him to be the eternal father, God Almighty. All right, then. That God is me. Nightmare. Who can say why? 
It was me. I thought I were two people approaching the bed where I myself was lying defenseless. Both victim and murderer at once. And the blade of the knife, which I simultaneously wielded and thrust into myself, gave off sinister flashes of light. And what words I heard coming from my mouth, unrepeatable. But it wasn't me talking, it was another me whom I didn't know and who. Good, too. Good thing the night is over, or almost. In the summer, at this time, one would hear birds. Instead, it must be the darkness forming the chrysalis of day, which this is born already extinguished. How can I be saying such things? I am a simple, shy, small town girl. And yet, at least while the night lasts, I talk like a poet spurred on by his demon. Demon. So then it's the devil in me that is speaking. Like a thin voice which whispers the lines to those who then deliver them. That's what the wind is. It is the devil that makes the trunk snap and the dried frozen branches of the oaks rustle until the trees sound out the names the things, the thoughts, which someone plants in me like sperm. My God, what did I say? What did I say? My mind is wandering in the darkness like some blind man in the light of day. The unreal quality created by the penumbra in which real things vanish to take on new shapes is frightening. So, the shadow of the back of the chair is transformed into the satanic leer of the table. And the chandelier that swings back and forth in the draft of air is nothing nothing but the bat into which he moves. The Lord of Darkness, whom we bear within us. The darkness which he illuminates with the spectral light. And that, precisely, is his name. Lucifer. He who bears light. But what a light.
Such ugly dreams, miss. I'd better left alone. Who are you? I'd just like to have some breakfast, if that's possible. I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I was quiet on purpose. I didn't want to disturb your... What shall we call it? <laughs> yes. Your soliloquy. Oh, don't be too harsh. Perhaps you might say it was a harmless interior monologue. Anyway, don't worry. There's really nothing to worry about and simply not uncompromising. Believe me. At most, a, a state of momentary mental alteration due to, oh, I don't know, a full moon or being overly stimulated by the warmth of the blankets, which sometimes causes the mind to turn the body into an ill-defined entity dominated, dominated by, by the PPE. That is the pleasure principle. The primordial instinct of human beings. What you in Italian call, if I'm not mistaken, the principio del piacere. I wouldn't know. But am I dreaming? You are here, aren't you? I mean, you're real, or should I pinch myself? A second ago, you seemed to be transparent, as though the light went through you. A strange sort of light, a light unlike anything found in the face of the earth. Transparent? Me. Perhaps. I haven't eaten anything since last night and uh, I still haven't had breakfast. Excuse me for insisting, but you seem to be really made of air. As though you'd been created out of the wind, whistling through the chinks in the window, in the spaces between the board. Are you sure you're not a... Oh, that's rich. You think I'm a ghost? Well, no. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm not a part of your dream or, if you prefer, your nightmare. Though you do seem quite capable of dreaming with your eyes open. In short, no. I'm not that beast which... I don't know how you managed to see as you looked out over the precipice into the abyss. Am I right? No. No. Look, let me tell you one last time, I'm just a customer. Maybe you're first at this hour, but you have to start with someone, so it's either me or someone else. Or are you still closed? We're about to open. Well, that's not a very convincing answer. Don't sit on the fence. Are you open or closed? Say it loud and clear, otherwise I'm leaving. In a hurry, are we? <sighs> Unfortunately, I'll have to be going soon. Besides, I think I took a wrong turn, and I'm somewhat lost. When I noticed the paved road ended and the forest began, I, I said to myself, 
Bloody hell, you're gonna end up like that master poet, Dante. Right into the dark wood, you see. So I went around in circles, and then I saw that the sign of this place was lit. So I stopped the car and I said to myself, this looks like a place frequented by hunters. And they'll probably be opening soon, I said to myself, and so I got out. And what did you say to yourself once you were out? I get it. You're making fun of me. Quite right. I did get lost like a many. I got off the highway because that straight road was driving me crazy. I've been driving all night, you see. So I got off and I got onto the state highway just so the odd curve would keep me away. Then I got onto the provincial one lane with curves everywhere until I finally ended up on this sort of mule track. You're lucky. They just paved it. They wanted to tear down the forest and break through the other side and connect it with the main highway. But then the environmentalists came out and the plan was put on hold. Great. So instead of finding a diner in the middle of the forest, I would have found a gas station with self-service pumps open 24-7. It's a diner. For truck drivers. Well, better that than hunters with their guns. They give me jitters. Well, that doesn't sound very good. It means you haven't quite divested yourself of your electrocomplex. Or, as Sigmund says, you're still suffering from penis envy. Why think in abstract terms about the monster within us instead of, am I right? I don't know. And I don't want to know. Or are you just afraid of saying it? What if I were? Slip on my helmet and take off. 
I don't know where I land on. I just ride and ride. Maybe even in circles, like an idiot. It would not be the first time. What kinds of thoughts? Sexual, yes. I beg your pardon? <laughs> You're quite at liberty not to talk about it. Mercy, yes. I don't believe this. I, on the other hand, if I were you, would talk about them. Why would I do that? Too much pressure. The machine might explode. And what makes you think it's under pressure? It's obvious. Oh, really? Then how can you say that? From the steam. You can't see that the espresso machine's about to go boom because you've got your back to it. But I can. Hurry before it blows up. Jesus, I just told you it's about to explode. Do something. Yes. Do that Oh. Motors and females. What joys, what travails. Don't be petty. Well, I'm just trying to kill time. I'm as hungry as a wolf. And if I don't get my coffee immediately, I'm going to start growling. Do you want to hear? Arr! Well, you have to wait a few minutes, Mr. Werewolf. It looks like one. Well, I don't want to brag. I wanted the machine. Because the valve gets blocked sometimes and it won't flush. The steam has to build up again. You have to be patient. <sighs> customer to a patient. Some service. Do I get a tip? Meanwhile, set the tables for breakfast. Why don't you give me a hand instead of being in the way? <laughs> no. There's no way that's going to happen. Lazy buttons. Why should I help you set up? So I'll save time. What do I get out of it if I do help? Your coffee. And did you want something else? A croissant? Whatever your heart desires. Fine. I'll give you a croissant as soon as they come from the bakery. And what if they don't come? Why shouldn't they come? Because of the psychosis. The monster's psychosis. you don't know. I wasn't born yesterday. You're just passing through. What do you know about what's going on in this town? I read the papers. Things make national news. Don't you read the papers? Yes. When I have time. And uh, don't you listen to the radio? Yes. When I have time. And when will you have time? When you leave me alone, so I can set up, seeing as you refuse to help me. Oh well, if it makes you happy. I bet that's the first time you do housework. The first and last. And what does your wife say about that? I'm not married. You have a girl, friend, or a fiancé. No. No, 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 no. Better alone than in bad company, I say. I think it's better if I don't talk to you. You make me mad.
Bravo. You sing like an angel. I'm no angel. No monster either, are you? Who knows? Now I'm scared. By the way, aren't you afraid of a monster? Me? I've never hurt anyone. Well, no, but monsters aren't so finicky. A nice looking young filly like yourself, all by her lonesome. Because you manage this place all by yourself, don't you? I thought we said we weren't going to ask any questions. When did we say that? I... Well, I heard you say... Well, that's why for a couple of days... For a couple of days now, Hunters seems to have... Disappeared. What? They've all gone hunting for the monster. Bad chance, no. Fear would have made them quit their beds. Oh, no. <laughs> Real brave when they have to shoot some poor Skylark. And genuine heroes when they can put their hands up some skirt. But all lying in their beds their heads under the pillow, and maybe with mommy a rolling pin at the ready, standing guard by the door. And you call those men? They've flown off to, just like they're birds. I'm still here though. I haven't flown away. Neither I nor my dicky bird. You stop smiling. Did I say something I shouldn't have? One illusion too many. A bit heavy-handed, perhaps. You're not from around here. You're just passing through. Why would the monster pick on you who have nothing to do with it? If it's a monster, it's probably crazy, right? And there's no reasoning with the mad, my dear. Oh, look. For me? You're just some Mr. Nobody who stopped for a coffee. Which I still haven't had. And I'm being tied to the galley. Work, slave. And not a sound. Button up. Look, I've already set two tables. You gonna put in a good word with me with the boss? If you can. And she did look at you. I am the owner. <laughs> this is your resort then. Well, well, well. Aren't we a catch? My parents are dead. I have no friends and no relatives. I've been left here all alone. And I like it that way just fine. I'm a little frightened at night. But otherwise I make up well. Even with my income taxes. And I don't need anyone. Not even an accountant. See? My, aren't you clever? But, pardon my curiosity, you're quite young. you dear ones? An orphan? And how did it happen? A tragedy? Why are you so interested? <laughs> let me guess, let me guess, please. Um, um, a silly traffic accident caused by, presumably, speeding and low tyre pressure. How do you know that? Well, I just guessed, but the statistics do back me up. Most deaths are caused by traffic accidents. But did I get it right? Bravo! I wonder why the pressure of the tyres was so low. I mean, it couldn't have been an oversight on, on the part of your dearly departed father. I mean, isn't it true that Daddy was a stickler for, de for details and, and checked the tyres every time he filled up with gas? Stop it. You're always sticking your nose into what's none of your business. And your, your adoptive parents who so wanted to have a daughter, but who couldn't have children, and then you come in on the scene with your cute little pigtails, of course. Didn't they die in a tragic accident? A gas leak? Exactly. 
a tragic accident. Oh, and your poor fiance. Didn't he perish in a mountaineering mishap the day after he deflowered you? Oh, but forgive the leading pun, but was his fatal follis due to a Freudian slip? What is it that you want from me? Nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted to point out that you've simply been unlucky. Very unlucky. Perhaps too unlucky. But in spite of all the tragedies that have dogged you and notwithstanding the terrible moral blows of which you have been the victim, you've pulled yourself together, you've, you've gone on all alone and now we are dealing with a professional, yes, an entrepreneur who has all of her papers together, yes, a capitalist genius. Congratulations. You know, you're pretty weird. Really? And am I cheeky too? Well, at this hour, in the shadow, an unusual operation, you can't deny that. Never before seen in these parts. You wouldn't by chance be the, the monster. Why not? Call the police. You almost attacked me. Almost. Only almost. Why? Would you have gone any further? Aren't the marks you left on my arm enough? Look! Don't get upset. It's just a moment. A moment of insanity. I admit it. I lost control. Not 
Pupils were dilated and filled with blood, like an animal. Exactly. How did, How did you... I guess? Yes. You frightened me. Finally. Oh, you find it amusing, do you? Fine. That'll teach me to trust the first person to come along. Listen. I'm sorry I frightened you. Seriously. And you think that'll get you up? Just saying you're sorry? Well, why not? Come on. Nothing really happened. Nothing serious. I mean... And the scratches? Did I dream those up? Of course not. There. I'm right. Real grave matters have transpired. Which are on the claws of a cat which didn't want to be held anymore. That's all. You'll end up in jail. <laughs> and the witnesses to prove, corroborate, etc., etc., etc. What about my word? <laughs> Your what? Oh, I see. I see. Well, of course. Your word. La di da. Men like you should be. Oh. 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 Or drowned. Or oh. court. Damn you all. Oh. Wow. That's the monster's, the monster's voice, you know. Lucky Lucky within you. Within you. Careful not to stroke him too much. He might peek out of oh. Was I the one who asked you what you keep in your refrigerator? No. So I'm not the one who's morbid. For all I care, next to your beef stew, you're keeping the corpse of a newborn. What do I know about your past? Me too.
access denied to unauthorized personnel. Am I right? Private property. Beware of dog. <laughs> A three-headed dog, good. How did you guess? Three heads? Says Pluto's dog and guards the entrance to hell. Stop it. Stop it. And I'm your sperm. Stop. You know the bad thing about dreams is that they can come true. You know, as if by. as if by. by magic. Or by sadism. Are you angry at me? No. I mean, yes! You shouldn't have branched about like a mad dog. I mean, you shouldn't have done it so well. You really seem to be a rabbit dog. <laughs> no. Maybe a little black poodle. That's more than enough. I'm being held prisoner by a monster! Internal or external? Real or imaginary? Concrete or phantasmagoric? You have to touch to believe. No! Don't touch me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You really do have to do when you. I will play. You'll play. You'll play. I will play this game, you bastard. <laughs> By the way, do you believe in the devil? In this day and age, it would be ridiculous to believe in him. But it could be dangerous not to believe in him. In your opinion, he exists? In my opinion, something, somewhere, does exist. I can't say where, however. Are you a murderer? I'm supposed to have inside me this abomination. Even worse. I've touched on the odd bauble. En passant, as it were. Let's just say the best of what's happening inside you. Goethe would have written hundreds of pages by now. He did go on about the homunculus and beautiful soul. 
Me? I just get right down to the nitty gritty. Very few words. Let the facts speak for themselves. When it comes right down to it, if you don't get your hands filthy, you just don't believe it. Against myself. And sometimes that makes you cry. Don't you think you're overdoing it a bit? I mean, it's certainly true that there's no greater evil than that which springs from within us. There's a remedy for everything. Believe me. No. I won't believe you. Those that haven't gone to hell and which haven't managed to make it to heaven. It's a purgatory in which monsters flit about which have, have never had the courage to fully realise themselves in their complete, total bestiality. Unfinished monsters, roughly sketched in, bits and pieces of monsters that don't make any sense, born out of, at most, a paltry imagination. Fortuitous flames of our thoughts which fire themselves up to keep themselves warm in their dramatic abstraction in their tragic cerebral isolation which are somewhat, if I may say so, wanker-like. A mind jerking off at the thought that it's creating light, like a light bulb, proud of its glare, with the sun burning bright in the sky. So what's the point of floating our thoughts in this purgatory in which everything is just smoke and mirrors, form without substance? Take a guess at what is what, what is this, what is that. Lend an ear and listen well. Though it seems silly as hell to have to deal with what's already being said. Oh well. Here goes. Often it can appear arcane, an inkling of what man's soul may attain. Yet it will seem empty to the profane, who seek to find themselves, though quite in vain. And all full of sand their hands shall remain. What is it? What is it? What is it? You have three seconds to give an answer. Or with me yourself to hell you must commit. One. Two. Three. Oh my, you make me laugh, I swear. You haven't got the answer yet. Come now, why? It's the infinite. But now your time is up and it's too late. You've lost your soul. It's bound for hell's wide gate. Man of men is the wolf. No other animal is worse than he. I must nourish myself on garbage. <laughs> Why, he shoots at anything that can fly. In his own image, God created him. But then he revealed the true face of his soul. And into the devil, he changed himself. Thinking him different than from himself. <laughs> what monsters are lurking in the dark, which aren't the product of his own fantasies. The shadows on the wall. A pure madness which changed reality into a manic mess. Be careful, Lila. The terrible monster has hidden himself inside you. Fight it with all your might, otherwise you'll be obsessed. Now, you'll have to tell me 
how you can get inside my mind. What? What do you take me for? First of all, I couldn't do that. And second of all, what reason could I possibly have to do such a thing? So, what's happening now? You're th thinking what I'm saying out loud. You're thinking it simultaneously with me, and you think that I'm sucking out all your ideas like a vampire, like a leech, like a pacifier. And? There's no and. I'm saying some things that are down to earth. Quite banal, so you can understand. You believe that I'm thinking what you're thinking and that you're thinking what I'm thinking, but only because I'm expressing some pretty obvious concepts. Universal ones. That is, valid for all mankind. Lucky you. Don't worry. I'm not as diabolical as I seem. Maybe. But you're limp. Me? Really? I never noticed. I'll get my hooves looked at. And also your left foot is bigger than your right one. It seems to be bursting out of its shoe. It's just the shoe, the, the, the foot that I used to push the brakes of inhibition. I guess I've been a little too heavy footed in the last little while. But you've got a gold tooth instead of a foot. So? What? You're not racist, are you? You've got something against people who are a little different? Well, look in the mirror. You've got an ugly spot on your neck. Now, out of courtesy, I didn't mention it till now. Here's what we'll do. When you get yourself looked at by a dermatologist for that growth, I'll go to a, to a shoe doctor for my shoe. You're quite right to treat me like a ninny. I must have made a mistake. Well, there's not much light and your imagination played a stupid trick on you. Still, you know, you see monsters everywhere. It's an obsession. Even in me, who up till now have behaved rather like a gentleman. Aside from the marks I left on your arm, but just an excess of animal zeal, which I fall prey to from time to time. But I could have taken advantage of the situation to satisfy my desires, if I had any. And I'm not saying I don't. But it seems to me I've been able to keep them under control rather well, wouldn't you say? Where is that, son? Dear monster, here I am, engulfed in extreme sorrow, in a suffering beyond endurance, surrounded by nothing but a painful silence. But I'm still waiting for a sign, for a message, suggested by your calls for help, that would allow me, come with me, to communicate with you. I ask myself, how you can possibly live with the ghosts of your cruelty, with the sense of guilt which you, I'm certain of it, harbor within you. I wonder whether and how you managed to shake off the anxiety and the torment because of the bit of humanity which, in spite of everything, is still seeing you. The 
that should be assailing you. You violated me in the most inner depth of my soul, in the deepest and truest moment of love, and obsessively, I ask myself why. I would like to look into your eyes and understand, yes, understand, what you feel now, whether there is a desire in you to free yourself of this gesture which marks your existence, whether the sense of profound failure, the uselessness of your actions torment you, as the reality of death afflicts me, at least help you to understand, let me feel that it isn't true that you're a monster, but just someone gone astray who, despite the evil committed, and for other reasons, is united to me by a common bond of suffering, the harm done to our humanity. Don't let the silence become a tool for destroying all semblance of feeling. Sighed, a monster named Lee.